Warren Buffett is a self-made investment billionaire, worth over $100 billion, who didn't inherit his fortune nor acquire it by innovating technology, but rather by winning consistently in the stock market. He started from humble beginnings as a shy boy who sold Coca-Cola door-to-door and developed an early obsession with investing from his father's library. His father was a smart businessman who opened his own company selling stocks and bonds to provide for his family after losing his job from a local bank. Buffett noticed the importance of money and learned about investing early on. At the young age of six, Buffett approached his grandfather who owned a local grocery store and asked him to provide drinks so that he could sell them around the neighborhood. His grandfather agreed, and Buffett started his first business selling Coca-Cola door-to-door, making five cents for every six-pack. He soon added more items to his small business and was selling chewing gum, magazines, and Coca-Cola while making a decent profit for himself. When Buffett was 11, he used all of his savings to buy his first stock, purchasing three shares for himself in an oil and gas company called City Service with each stock valued at 38.25. Shortly after buying them, their value dropped to around 27 per share. Despite the anxiety he felt, he held on tight and waited until their value rose to $40 before selling them. Although he had successfully turned a profit, he noticed that those same shares later shot up to over $200. This experience taught him an important lesson. He's never known what the market is going to do the next day, and his game is to decide whether he's in the right economy and by owning good companies for long periods of time. A few years later, Buffett's family moved from Omaha to Washington, D.C., where he got his first real job at the age of 14 delivering newspapers for the Washington Post. However, he wasn't satisfied with the money he earned, so he took another job with one of their competitors, the Times Herald, and began delivering newspapers simultaneously, earning $179 per month. He later used his earnings and savings to buy a pinball machine with a friend of his and installed it at a barber shop. Soon after, they bought two more pinball machines and split the profits between themselves and the owners who ran the shop. Buffett later used the money earned to buy his first property, a 40-acre plot of land in Nebraska. The craziest thing about all of this was that Warren was just 15 when he bought the farm. Even at his young age, it was clear that this boy from Omaha was on to something big. After graduating from high school in 1947, Buffett was eager to start his career as a full-time stockbroker. However, his father had other plans for him. He wanted Warren to go to college, so Buffett enrolled at the University of Pennsylvania. He was able to pay for his studies with the earnings from his Nebraska farmland, which he rented out. After obtaining his bachelor's degree in business administration from the University of Nebraska, Buffett applied to Harvard for his master's degree but was rejected. This rejection, however, turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Buffett then enrolled at the Columbia Business School, where he met a teacher who would change his life, Benjamin Graham. Benjamin Graham was an economist and investor whose work and writings Buffett was already familiar with. In fact, the same year that they met, Graham had just published one of the most famous books of his career, The Intelligent Investor. In simple terms, the book was a step-by-step guide on how to invest successfully and consistently without speculating by buying stocks that were undervalued. Warren quickly became one of Benjamin Graham's best students, and according to Buffett, Graham would go on to become one of the most influential men in his life after his father. After receiving his master's degree in economics, Buffett was eager to kickstart his career and yearned to work near the headquarters of the biggest investment firms in the country and home of the historic New York Stock Exchange. Wall Street, however, posed a significant challenge for Buffett. Despite his wealth of knowledge in business management and investing, Warren was still an introverted 21-year-old who couldn't present himself as the charismatic business tycoon he's become today. He was terrified of talking to new people and at times would even throw up out of pure nervousness. Nevertheless, he summoned the courage and signed up for a public speaking course. That move turned out to be one of the best investments he ever made. Investing in yourself is the best thing you can do. The more you learn, the more you earn. Not too long after, Benjamin Graham contacted Buffett and offered him a job at his investing firm in New York, to which the young man gladly agreed. There, he mastered the art of security analysis, learning how to see the real value of a company based on their balance sheets. But while Graham and Buffett shared a mutual respect for each other, the differences in their philosophies soon became obvious. Buffett was more interested in understanding how companies worked and believed that the company's management should be part of the investment decision process. Graham disagreed. 
He was more concerned with the company's numbers and balance sheets, and it didn't help matters that he was also a difficult man to work with, expecting strict compliance to the conventional rules of investing, which Buffett's young mind was constantly questioning. But ultimately, their disagreements wouldn't matter because by 1956, Warren Buffett was on his own. After Graham decided to retire and shut down the partnership, the young man had built up his savings from $9,800 to $175,000 and gained first-hand experience running a New York investment firm. He was now ready to establish his own partnership, making those who invested in him into millionaires while also transforming himself into one of the wealthiest people in the world. Buffett returned to Omaha in 1956 at the age of 25 and started his own partnership called Buffett Associates Limited. Despite having more than enough money to rent an office space and hire staff, he instead chose to use one of the bedrooms of his house and manage the business himself. He got some of his friends and family to invest a total of $105,000 and immediately after, he kick-started his partnership. Influenced by his master Graham, Warren Buffett began investing in undervalued stocks but took its philosophy to the extreme by dealing with terrible performing companies that were ready to go bankrupt, buying them so cheap that even their liquidation value was worth more. This strategy is what he calls the cigar butt. Cigar butt investing runs along that same line. You find a terribly undervalued stock that sells for so cheap you know for a fact it is worth more. And after selling it at its appropriate price, the initial bargain purchase makes the puff all free. This method proved to be a masterstroke for Buffett and over the next six years of his business, his partnership's net worth increased from a $105,000 venture to a $7.2 million dollar foundation. As his portfolio began to grow, so did the number of people who wanted to join. However, most of them never ended up partnering with him because they couldn't trust an 18-year-old looking kid to manage all their money by himself, and they were right. Warren Buffett still had the looks of a teenager despite being in his late 20s, and for more than five years, he conducted his business all alone, writing all the checks, filing the tax returns, and taking delivery on stocks, causing many potential clients to doubt him. Ten years into his partnership, Warren Buffett was managing over $44 million in assets, and just three years later, these numbers shot up to an astonishing $104 million. However, while the market was booming and his partners were very happy with the return on their investments, there was one thing that Buffett worried about, the rising stock prices. There's a motto that Warren Buffett lives by that has always served him well. Be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. You see, it became difficult for him to keep making his cigar butt investments in an overvalued stock market, and he was well aware that the bull market they were experiencing would soon be coming to an end. He found it too risky to continue investing with other people's money, and so by the end of 1969, he made the big decision to dissolve the business altogether and let his partners go. Still, he had built his own fortune all the way to $25 million by the age of 39, and he was ready to make his next move, turning Berkshire Hathaway into a billion-dollar empire. In 1965, Berkshire Hathaway was a struggling textile company whose stocks were trading at around $7. Warren Buffett purchased a lot of shares in the company for $7.50 each as a cigar butt investment. Three years later, he arranged a deal with the owner to sell his shares at $11.50, but the owner tried to cheat him by buying his shares at $11.37 instead. In return, Buffett bought out the whole company and fired the owner. Instead of letting his investment go to waste, Buffett phased Berkshire Hathaway out of the textile industry and used it as a holding firm to make investments. Buffett changed his investment philosophy from buying undervalued stocks to great companies at fair prices after his bad experience. He began searching for companies that he believed had an economic moat, referring to a company's ability to maintain a competitive advantage over the rest of the industry and still maintain its market share. Using this philosophy, Buffett began buying large shares in grade A companies such as American Express and The Washington Post. Buffett also started buying insurance businesses, tapping into billions of dollars and generating more profit from those investments. Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio skyrocketed over the years, and Buffett himself became the richest man on earth in 2008. Even with all his riches, Buffett remains an astonishingly frugal man who can be seen driving his 2014 Cadillac XTS and often eating McDonald's for breakfast. Buffett will be remembered as the man who understood the game of business and investment better than anyone else. Thanks for watching and see you next video.